Indonesia's precious rainforests have been under continuous assault for decades. The rate of destruction has accelerated since the late 1990s due to massive illegal logging spurred on by corruption and collusion by the authorities. More than two million hectares of forests are being lost every year, with the huge islands of Sumatra and Kalimantan bearing the brunt of the onslaught. It is predicted that lowland forest in both of these areas will be wiped out in the next seven years. As forests are destroyed in western Indonesia by a powerful coalition of timber bosses supported by the police, army and politicians, their attention is now switching east. Their relentless march of destruction has moved to Indonesia's last frontier, the province of West Papua. The city of Sarong, on the northwest tip of Papua, is a hotspot for the illegal logging business. Its hotels and seedy bars are where deals are struck between the timber mafia and foreign timber buyers, mostly from Malaysia, China and India. Much of the illegal timber traded in Sarong is bound for the international market. In 2002, the Indonesian Navy seized the Singapore-registered vessel, the ASEAN Premier, carrying illegal timber destined for China. Three other cargo ships were also seized, but one escaped and the other two were released after bribes were paid. The prime target for the loggers is the Merbau tree, a threatened species with the last commercial stands found on the island of Papua. While Merbau can fetch up to $500 per cubic meter on the international market, communities around Sarong only receive as little as $10. Merbau is used for flooring and furniture. Large amounts are being illegally shipped out from Sarong, despite Indonesia's log export ban. This shipping website shows consignments of Merbau logs awaiting collection for delivery to China and India. In 2002, a cargo ship carrying illegal Merbau from Sarong was detained in southern China, a major destination for illegal timber from West Papua. Logging operations have been ready work in Sumatra, Kalimantan and Sulawesi. And now the logging operation moving in to Papua after Merbau tree. And this Merbau tree is actually the largest tree species in Papua and also quite valuable. And most of them goes for export. The quest for Merbau has driven logging deep into the remote virgin forests of Papua. EIA and Telepak travelled south of Sarong City, a day's journey by speedboat and on foot, to the home of the Kanasaimos tribe, to witness the impact of logging on traditional communities. The Kanasaimos people rely on agriculture fishing, hunting and farming for their needs. Incursions into their forests by outside logging operations first began in the late 1990s, but have intensified recently due to the presence of Merbau in the area.
Isolated from roads and rivers, this village derives most of its needs from the surrounding forest. Wildlife is hunted for food, and wild birds are caught for food and to be kept as pets. But logging operations are already affecting villagers' ability to live off the forest. Dampak dari penebangan di wilayah Kenasaimos itu mengakibatkan adanya satwa-satwa di situ jumlahnya berkurang. Sebagaimana pindah dari tempat itu ke tempat yang lain. Contohnya, masyarakat berburu burun di tempat itu. Tidak mendapat lagi seperti yang dulunya. In three locations in the Kunasaimos tribal lands, illegal merbau logging is taking place against the wishes of the community. Damage to the forest from logging roads is clear to see. EIA and Telepak observed large merbau logs awaiting collection, clearly illegal, since no official permit has been granted to log in this area. The outsider responsible for the illegal logging of this tribal land is a military police officer called Kaspar. Based at this nondescript building in Sarong City, Kaspar has coerced members of the community to assist his logging operations and threatened reprisals to anyone who opposes him. This document shows an unofficial agreement between Kaspar and a villager, Nixon Kolingar, whose name is also clearly visible on these illegal cut merbau logs. Under autonomy laws, West Papua has adopted a system of small-scale logging concessions called copper mass. Intended to allow communities to manage their own forest, 
Coppermas has instead been ruthlessly exploited by timber bosses and the military to obtain cheap timber at the expense of the indigenous communities. The exploitation of this copper mass system is clear to see in Raja Ampat, a unique group of islands in Sarong province. Around half the 120 or so copper mass concessions in the province are located in Raja Ampat, despite the islands being sparsely populated. EIA and Telepak visited Salawati Island with local activists and found logging activities in protected areas. The names of the timber businessmen and their companies are well known. In 2002, the Kalyam area in the north of Salawati Island was logged by the same company PT USA, despite the area being within a nature reserve. The damage done by the logging is clearly visible, yet the community received no compensation. Companies like PT USA are able to act with impunity due to collusion with the military. There is also corruption in the local forestry office. Here, officials willingly and illegally redraw the boundaries of protected areas to suit the needs of timber companies, allowing access to valuable timber. Documents show that the companies even pay the forestry office expenses for boundary surveys. Much of the timber stolen from Raja Ampat enters the international market. EIA and Telepak discovered this Malaysian barge waiting to load merbau logs in a nature reserve on Batanta Island next to Salawati. Conversations with workers at the site revealed that the company was owned by a Malaysian who had recently switched operations from West Kalimantan. Illegal logs on board the seized vessel ASEAN Premier bound for China came from Raja Ampat. The early ravages of the rapacious logging industry which have afflicted much of Indonesia can be seen across West Papua. This last frontier of pristine forest is under dire threat as logging operations spread to the remotest areas. Yet, the only beneficiaries are the timber traders, their military protectors and the corrupt officials who will redraw protected area boundaries and release ships laden with illegal timber for a price. Promises by the chief of the Indonesian military to root out corruption and by the Indonesian government to stop illegal logging have come to nothing. <laughs> 